Welcome to another lesson on Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 2 and starting at verse 6. We're going to be continuing this kenosis passage, exciting things, exciting verses of scripture about humility, about, about the word of God. All right. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. And we can rejoice in our hearts today about what we're going to learn in this passage. But as we saw last lesson in verse 6, who being in the form of God, and we saw that being is hypercone, and it means a pre-existent state. This Greek word always involves pre-existence, and it means that Jesus Christ pre-existed. And how did he pre-exist? He pre-existed in the form of God, the morphe. That means Jesus Christ, his being, his, it doesn't, doesn't mean that he looked like God. It means that inwardly he was God. So Jesus Christ pre-existed as God. He didn't become God. He was God before he even came to this earth, before he was born in a human body. That's what he's saying, who being Jesus Christ, being already God in the form of God, in the who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, robbery here means a treasure to be retained at all costs. So our Lord did not consider the expression of his divine essence such a treasure that it should be retained at all costs. So that means that, that Jesus Christ would be willing to give up his rights to his expression if the necessity arose. What he's saying here is this, who being in the form of God, that he thought it not robbery, here is, here's Jesus. He's in heaven. He's at the right hand of the Father. And he's emanating light. He, he's God. He's, things are, 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 he's expressing himself as God. All around him are, are, are angels worshiping. And the four creatures, the four beasts around the, are worshiping day and night. And Jesus Christ is in heaven with God, expressing himself as God, being worshipped in tremendous light, in tremendous glory. And that's his pre-existent. He's in heaven with God in all of this glory, in all of his kingship, in all of his majesty. He's there in heaven, okay? And Jesus Christ did not consider that 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 expression as as that he had to hold on to that as so much that he couldn't give it up that he couldn't walk away from it for a while and that's what he's saying in this word robbery that Jesus Christ it says here being in the form of God that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God so Jesus Christ was equal with God in heaven with God expressing himself as God and receiving the glories of, of, of being God, of being worshipped, okay? And then in verse 7 he says, but made himself of no reputation. This is the great kenosis passage. Made himself of no reputation. This is where, oh, this is, this is beautiful. This is exciting. It means that Jesus Christ set aside the outward expression of his deity while he was expressing himself as something else. This is, oh, this is, this is exciting. It says that Jesus Christ, he, he, he made a decision to set aside this expression and take upon himself a completely different expression. Okay. So. This is not like other, like other people teach that Jesus Christ, when he came and was born, that Jesus Christ denied his deity. Okay? Jesus denied his deity. That's not true. Okay? That's false teaching. Jesus Christ 
never denied his deity. Jesus Christ is deity. I mean, how can, how can Jesus, how can God stop being deity? How can he say, oh, okay, here's deity. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to set it over here. And, oh, look at me. See me? I'm not deity anymore. That's, that's false teaching. That's wrong. Never, never, never in God's existence did God ever deny his deity. Did he ever, did he, I mean, God denied the use of his deity. That's, that's the key. God denied the use of his deity, but God can't stop being deity. He is deity. <laughs> that's what makes God, God, his deity. He can't stop being deity. He can't just set it aside and say, okay, deity, sit over here for a while, and I'll be back later on after I rise from the dead. Ha! No, he didn't do that. Jesus Christ was always God. And it proves it in, in the, when, when on the Mount of Transfiguration, right? Jesus Christ expressed himself in all of his glory. That deity was always there. It was covered by a physical body, but it was always there. But he says it made himself of no reputation. That means Jesus Christ made a decision. God himself made a decision to come to this earth and be born and to take on a completely different expression. In heaven, he's expressing himself as God, being worshiped as God. But now he's coming to the earth and he's going to express himself in a completely different way. What is it? As we see in the rest of this verse, verse seven, and took upon him the what? The form of a servant, form, morphe, same Greek word, took upon him the form, the inward expression, the outward expression of who he was inside. This is, ex oh, this is great stuff. Listen. The outward expression of who he was inside. He's taking upon the form of a servant. Servant here means bond slave. So what's the saying is, is that God chose to stop expressing himself as king and he would express him because inwardly, inwardly, inwardly is deity. Deity is coming out and in heaven, He's expressing his deity in glory. But when he came to earth, also, also, listen, on the inside of him was a bond slave. God had the ability within him. God had, had two opposites in, inside of him, in a, in a sense, if you want to say. He has deity inside of him. But God chose to, to God made a decision to not express himself as deity anymore. It didn't mean he stopped becoming deity. Remember, he can't do that. God is deity. He always is. But God chose to stop expressing himself as deity. And he chose to express himself as a bond slave. Come to serve. A bond slave. A slave. Oh, that's beautiful. It's beautiful stuff to know that God had the ability to, to be a king. He could be king, but, at, but, but in a moment of time, he can be a bond slave with no rights. Be a servant of all. Wipe your feet and wash your feet. That's amazing. It's amazing truths that come out here in these verses, in this kenosis passage. That's why I say we have to take it slow. It's rich stuff here. God, God came, God who being in the form of God. Yes, he existed in, in eternity past in all of his glory, but he chose, he chose to identify himself with us, with mankind and take upon himself a human body and be clothed with a human body and to have all of that deity inside this human body and God chose to stop expressing his deity and now to express something else which was with inside him. The ability, the ability to be a bond slave, a servant to all, to humble himself and to wipe sinful men's feet, sinful women's feet, right? 
to, 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 to cleanse people's hearts, to take away their sins. That's how he chose to express himself. Verse 7, but he made himself of no reputation and he put, took upon him the form of a servant. He became as a servant and was made and was made in the likeness of men. Likeness here means that Jesus Christ was like man in that he had a human body, but he was not identical with man because he did not have a sinful nature. He was, he was made in the likeness of men. He had a physical body. You could touch it. You could, you could touch it. He ate food like we ate food. He breathed the air like we breathed the air. He had the same kind of physical body that we have. The only difference was he didn't have, he didn't have an old sin nature like we have. So he was made in the likeness of men. Okay. And this is great. This means that within the nature of Jesus are two completely opposite expressions. Jesus expressed himself as king of kings, creator of the universe in all his glory and majesty. And yet also Jesus ex expressed himself as a complete bond slave, having no rights but completely submitted to the Father's will. Completely submitted to the Father's will. Jesus could have come to this earth and said, cast out all you wicked sinners and, and expressed himself and you're not holy. No one here is righteous. <laughs> Kaboom, right? And destroy everything. No, he could express himself as deity in all of this is what God is like. See how holy I am and see how righteous I am. This is what you need to be. No, he didn't do that. Jesus Christ, in tremendous love and grace and forgiveness, came in a human body to express God, to express the love of God and kindness and grace of God. And he came to express the inward nature of being a bond slave, being a servant, completely submitted to his Father's will completely submitted to God's will. He came to serve God and to serve mankind too and to provide salvation for us. And that's the tremendous grace of God. That's that's why it's exciting. These verses are exciting. They're not dull and bland and, 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 and dry Greek and whatever. No, no. This is exciting stuff when we take the word of God and we expose it for its richness. All right? Until next lesson, we're going to get into Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 8. Walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.